Hello, and welcome to the 200th episode of 7 Days of Science. Coming up this week, I get our drinks order mixed up. The 10 tequila fish, Ben gets excited about a fossil. The degree of preservation of the skeleton is just phenomenal. And IT's a massive project. Starting off the news this week, a fantastic story about some Mexican fish. It goes all the way back to 1998, when conservationists from Chester Zoo in the UK sent 10 tequila fish, or Zugoneticus tequila, to Michoacanda University in Mexico. Researchers at the university maintained and grew this colony, and in 2003 the tequila fish was recognised as extinct in the wild. The university started preparing for an introduction starting with 40 pairs, so 80 fish, and gradually grew this population to around 10,000 individuals, all being reared in an environment that closely mirrors their natural habitat. And finally, the day has come, as 1,500 of these fish have been released back into the wild, with their conservation status now changed from extinct to endangered. With the close help of the local community around the habitats of these fish, and a heightened understanding of how changes in their habitat led to their extinction, hopefully those who reintroduce this species will be able to assist the population to survive and thrive. And hopefully we'll be able to see more studies like this in the future. In other news, the James Webb Telescope, dubbed Hubble's successor, has had a successful launch on Saturday and is on its way to its permanent position a million miles away from Earth. It's going to be a while, unfortunately, as it's due to come online and become fully operational in the summer of next year. Launched on Christmas Day on an Ariane 5 rocket, this is an incredibly important event for both NASA, ESA, CSA and space exploration as a whole. Not only is the James Webb Telescope much, much more powerful than Hubble, and of course tailored to view infrared light waves, its orbit will be far further out. Hubble sits at around 570 kilometres, or 350 miles, away from Earth. The James Webb Telescope won't even be in orbit of Earth. Instead, it will be orbiting the Sun and hiding behind Earth at around a million and a half kilometres away, or a million miles. Its position, and the way it's facing, will help keep one side of the telescope at under minus 200 degrees Celsius, as all these very environment-dependent systems will help the telescope look deeper and in more detail at the beginnings of the universe than ever before. And now over to Ben to talk about how important it is to get to 200 episodes of 7 Days of Science. Thanks Doug. Well, the last couple of weeks have seen an incredible number of exciting paleontology papers, and one of these that actually came out last week but that definitely needs covering here is the description of an oviraptorid embryo perfectly preserved inside its egg. This discovery really is absolutely incredible. The degree of preservation of the skeleton is just phenomenal, and tells us so much about the hatching process of these dinosaurs. The fossil itself comes from a late Cretaceous age deposit in southern China, and is identified as a member of the Oviraptoridae grouping, but a genus level identity is not given. The paper explains how complete skeletons of non-avian dinosaur embryos actually found preserved inside eggs are incredibly rare, so this find is particularly remarkable. The way the embryo is positioned in the egg is with its head below its body and its feet on either side, while its back is curled up against the blunter end of the egg. This sort of posture has never been observed in a non-avian dinosaur before, but is actually quite similar to the position taken up by late-stage embryos of modern birds. Looking at other late-stage oviraptorid embryos, the researchers therefore propose that these non-avian dinosaurs actually developed bird-like postures late in incubation, explaining that in living dinosaurs they're to do with coordinated embryonic movements that help to tuck the embryo, a highly important factor in enabling the animals to hatch successfully. So, the paleontologists suggest, it seems that this pre-hatching behaviour actually originated in non-avian theropods and is not, as we had thought, a feature unique to birds. It's a truly fantastic discovery that tells us so much about these amazing animals. Hopefully more embryonic fossils such as this are found in the future to help us investigate this behaviour even more. And finally for the paleontology news this week is another incredibly exciting paper. As a big fan of ichthyosaurs, I was very excited to hear about the discovery of a new sperm whale sized species of mid-triassic ichthyosaur from Nevada. Meet Symbospondylus youngorum. This new ichthyosaur is incredibly important for several reasons. 
Not only is it the largest species of the Symbospondylus genus now known, but it lived just 3 million years after ichthyosaurs are thought to have originated in the early Triassic, and only 6 million years after the end Permian extinction, indicating that ichthyosaurs achieved giant body size incredibly rapidly in geological time, compared to the cetaceans, which reached comparable sizes only after tens of millions of years. This is an absolutely incredible revelation, with this species of Symbospondylus therefore being the largest animal that existed at this time, possessing a skull reaching 2 meters in length. The paper also explains how the formation this ichthyosaur comes from, the fossil hill member, was supporting a faunal composition that actually rivaled those of modern marine mammal faunas, with both small-bodied 2 meter long ichthyosaurs, as well as this new giant, estimated at over 17 meters. Plus, various other very large Symbospondylus species are already known from this fauna, in addition to a large raptorial ichthyosaur called Thalatoarchon, suggesting that this was a very stable trophic network. The study therefore concludes that ichthyosaurs benefited greatly from the abundance of pelagic conodonts and ammonoids after the recovery from the end Permian extinction. It's a really awesome discovery that just shows how amazing these animals are and how much more there is to learn about their evolution and ecology. Back to Dog in the Studio. Thank you, Ben. Well, that's it for this week's Seven Days of Science. I do hope you've had a lovely Christmas and a happy new year to all.